Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is Smiley. This is a gravitational lens formed through the interaction of different galaxies and different galactic clusters, creating this beautiful image. And as you might already know, a lot of different beautiful images out there, especially the ones discovered in the last few decades, have been a result of some sort of a gravitational lens or gravitational lensing effects. And although today scientists generally can explain pretty much most of the gravitational lenses and the effects that they form through the analysis using a lot of Einsteinian theories, sometimes the scientists do discover something that's somewhat difficult to explain. And today we're actually going to be talking about one such object that was only explained very recently but was known to us for almost a decade. The unusual object you see right here known as the Hamilton's object. The strange galactic object that was discovered completely by accident when the scientists were looking at and measuring various distant quasars located in a somewhat similar region. And so in this video we're going to be discussing the explanation for this unusual double galaxy as you can see it right here and the implications this discovery has on our understanding of what the universe is actually made out of. But first of all, well, I guess it's important to sort of understand that when we're actually looking at different distant galaxies and when we're looking across the universe, we're going to be seeing a lot of different mirroring effects and a lot of different distortion that's generally formed through the interaction of different matter and light that passes close to it. But these particular effects are not always apparent to us. In some cases they are very obvious, like for example when we're looking at a very distant quasar and suddenly discover that it forms something like this, this is known as the Einstein's cross. In this case we're pretty certain that what we're looking at is indeed a gravitational lensing effect. Something very similar is happening in this galaxy here as well. And in some other cases we usually see these effects as something really massive passes in front of a distant star, making the star slightly brighter and also forming unusual effects such as mirroring effects that sometimes last anywhere from a few hours to possibly a few days. But obviously, not all of them are so apparent. Not everything is going to produce something similar to this. In some cases, these effects are not as obvious and only become apparent once you actually start looking for them. In other cases, they produce something that's extremely difficult to explain, like this beautiful stretch galaxy you see right here. And in other cases, they produce something that doesn't even look like a galaxy and usually takes anywhere from a few months to possibly even a few years to finally figure out what we're actually looking at. And so it's sort of important to realize that everything around us kind of acts like this unusual mirror maze that you sometimes find in certain uh, theme parks or certain amusement parks. So a lot of things we're looking at are either not necessarily there or are producing light that's entirely different from what we get to see here on planet Earth. And in some cases many of these things might not even exist. A lot of the light that's received on the planet could be a result of essentially a visual illusion. So sort of like the smiley you see right here. But despite all of these optical illusions, they actually provide an extremely important tool for the scientists that allows the scientists to study objects that would be otherwise invisible to us while also helping us figure out a lot of features of the universe itself. For example, by comparing different mirror images coming from the same quasar, we can typically start figuring out how the space between the galaxies behave and even how fast the universe itself is expanding. But more importantly, a lot of modern techniques also allow us to reconstruct these galaxies, helping us visualize what a lot of these ancient galaxies might have looked like and thus understand what happened in the beginning of the universe and how these galaxies were different from the galaxies today. And in the last few decades, the scientists have seen pretty much everything. They've seen different galaxies forming unusual shapes, they've even seen different distant supernova and some other unusual objects that were only visible through the gravitational landing effects. And most importantly, time and time again, these scientists, after every gravitational lens, were able to explain everything they're observing to extreme detail. But that's until relatively recent discovery of this unusual object the object that's referred to as the Hamilton's object. And what the scientists were seeing here was very difficult to explain. It seemed to be some sort of a double galaxy with the other very similar object located not so far from it in the region right here. And so what exactly was happening here and how exactly was any of this formed? When the scientists originally discovered this, they really had no idea. At first they thought maybe they were looking at some kind of an unusual collision between two galaxies. But what made this collision really strange and very difficult to explain 
is the fact that the galaxies looked almost identical, and they also formed a shape that we've never seen before. And also the appearance of that third galaxy that looked very similar to the other two made no sense either. The other mystery here was that, okay, if this is a gravitational lens, which was one of the explanations, what is making all of this lens? What's making the gravitational lens happen? Normally you would have either some sort of a galactic cluster or some sort of a galaxy in front of all of this. But nothing here stood out as a potential gravitational lens. And so after years and years of speculating, analyzing, talking to different people at different conferences, and trying time and time again to explain this, the scientists finally figured it out. And it looks like this is one of the rarest occurrences of what seems to be a gravitational lens, but in this case not actually formed by any galaxy. As a matter of fact, this once again is one of the most definitive proofs for the existence of the unusual dark matter. This very strange, very rare phenomenon seems to have occurred simply because the galaxy passed right in front of a large ripple of a fabric of space-time, and this ripple was very likely formed by huge dense amounts of dark matter. Whatever it is, we still have no idea what it is and what it's made out of, but it just seems to exist and this particular discovery seems to prove it once again. And so let's talk about some of the details here. Now first of all, the paper in the description below proves without a doubt that all three objects are basically the same galaxy. You can see them in A, B and C. And so this definitively proves that this is a gravitational lens in effect. In this case, the scientists established that this is a galaxy that's about 11 billion light years away from us. But what is producing the lensing effect and what's causing the galaxy to look the way it is? Well, it turns out that this location does have a galactic cluster located in the region that we're looking at. It's about 7 billion light years away from us, with the approximate center of the galactic cluster being somewhere right here. The cluster itself was only discovered later on and was not actually present in a lot of different surveys. And so in this case it became quite apparent that it was really the galactic cluster and the mass in the cluster that was producing these effects. But the question here is why did it not look like a typical Einstein's cross? Or any of the other formations we've seen from some of the previous gravitational lens formations, such as once again the smiley right here? Well, it's because of the effect that's being formed here, the unusual rare phenomenon formed by the actual ripple itself. The comparison scientists use here is essentially the type of reflections you see on the seafloor right here that are in reality formed by the ripples formed on the surface of the water. A lot of these distortions and mirror effects are produced by the waves and the ripples on the surface, and something extremely similar happened right here as well. As the galactic light from this galaxy passed through the ripple of space-time formed by the dark matter, it ended up bending the light, producing not a typical Einstein's ring, but a much more unusual formation of several mirrored images that at least for now we're going to be referring to as the Hamilton's object. And so in this case, the ripples on the surface act as partial lenses. They end up focusing the light in different ways, producing various patterns that we see on the bottom of the seafloor. And so now imagine this, but in outer space, and instead of water, imagine a lot of dark matter moving around, shuffling around, and producing a lot of these wavy effects. And you basically get this as a result. But because of the rarity of this unusual phenomenon, at least for now, this is probably the best known example. Although there's a very high chance that we've seen a lot of these in the past, we just had no idea what we're looking at. Depending on how often this happens, it's quite likely that some of the galaxies that might appear the same could actually be the same galaxy that's just basically mirrored by another very very massive space-time ripple. And so this would be a really interesting phenomenon to investigate and to find out more about, although at least at the moment it would be really difficult to find out what exactly is an actual galaxy and what is just a mirror image. But through this analysis, the scientists also discovered a lot of other things. For example, we know now that this is a typical spiral disk galaxy that seems to have a lot of clumpy star formation. In other words, stars form in extremely dense regions. The scientists have also established that the distribution of dark matter in this particular region seems to be, for the most part, more or less smooth. Which, at least in theory, could one day help us identify what exactly is causing these effects and basically answer the question of what exactly is this dark matter. But because in this case it seems to suggest that the actual dark matter clumps are somewhat small in size, it also implies that the particle has to be very very massive if it is a particle. But if it's formed by something else that's not a particle, well, in this case it needs to be explained in some other way. 
although trying to explain this without the existence of dark matter would be, at the moment, pretty much impossible. Whatever is happening in this particular region is definitely caused by something invisible and something extremely massive. But something that doesn't seem to be a black hole, because we would probably see the effects from this as well. And so even though the mystery of the Hamilton's object, at least for now, has been solved, there are still a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of things we'll be talking about in some of the future videos. But I guess until then, check out all of the links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.